Hi, I'm James. I'm a firefighter at Kingsley North Fire Station Greenwatch, and I'm going to show you one of the six appliances that we have across our two stations. So this is uh, Kingsley P7. It's a heavy rescue pump. It's one of four across the service. There's one here, there's one at Great Yarmouth, there's one at Thetford, and there's one at Carrow Station, which is in Norwich. Um, this goes to uh, any normal incident that any fire engine would go to, uh, but this also has an enhanced capability for rescues, especially around uh, RTCs, which are our road traffic collisions, which we attend a lot of. So I'll now show you down the side of the vehicle and we'll have a look at the equipment that we carry. In the cabs, we have standard things. I'll open this one for you. In the cabs, we have BA sets for breathing apparatus and we carry our first aid kits. Um, not a great deal else, it's, uh, it's really just um, admin bits and pieces and equipment that we need sort of on the way, so things like maps, PPE and other items such as that. So in the cab of our uh, fire engines here at Kingsley, um, they're all relatively, relatively similar. Um, currently during Covid conditions we can only ride a, a maximum crew of five. Um, some of the appliances across the county can carry uh, up to nine firefighters at a time, um, but as I say, Covid. Currently, we're restricted to five. Um, the equipment that we carry in the front is, is quite limited to the stuff that we kind of need on the way to an incident. So we have communications equipment in the, in the, in the, in the scope of uh, handheld radios. We have a main scheme radio up here, which we can talk to our control room in uh, Wyndham from. And our main source of communications are these mobile data terminals or MDTs. So it is just a computer pretty much. Um, but we receive all our incident information on these and we share that information back with our control room by these as well without actually having to speak to anybody. Um, so this is our status screen and we have different statuses for what we're doing and things. When we have an incident come up, it, it gives us all the information. It gives us a map. Uh, it gives us a map and um, where we need to go and things. So at the minute, um, you can see there, if I scroll in a little bit, so that's giving us, that's where we are in the yard at Kingsley North currently. Um, we can then access various types of information um, from our equipment manuals, our operational information forms and guidance, and something called crash recovery. So at the scenes of our road traffic collisions, we can actually look up where the, um, where the pertinent information is of, of the cars for us to do with airbags and other supplementary restraint systems and battery locations and things like that. We're able to send messages to our control and they're able to send messages to us on these. So every appliance has one of these. The other things we carry, as I said in here, we got many maps. Um, so if all else fails and we don't know where we need to go, we've got the maps to use on those. To the driver's side of things, we have all the controls for the uh, treble nine system. So we can turn the lights on um, and all the scene lighting on the appliance. We can turn the sirens on and we can change the tones for what we need on those things. We've obviously got the standard driving controls as well to do with heating and lighting and things. We carry between 1,800 and 2,250 litres of water on our appliances in the county. Uh, and we can empty those tanks in under two minutes uh, with, the, with the pump capacities that we have available to us. Um, so we do need to find water supplies quite quickly when we go to incidents. Going on to the first locker, we sort of class this one as our heavy rescue equipment locker that where all our RTC, our road traffic collision uh, equipment can be found. So going from top to bottom really. So at the top here we have an extrication board uh, for removing casualties out of cars. We then have a ladder rescue kit. Behind there we have a thermal image camera. Coming further, we'll go along there, we've got a couple of... Um, We've got a couple of angle grinders on there, so we've got a nine inch angle grinder at the top and a four and a half inch angle grinder there, both run on 110 volt. Um, we've got police signs for looking after our scene safety when we're at the scenes of uh, road traffic collisions or other incidents. Coming further down, again for our scene safety we have pop-up cones, which we can place out in the road which again just looks after the scene and makes the scene safe for us to actually operate in and the other emergency services that are with us. Um, we have an RTC, which is again, road traffic collision grab bag, and that's just got a range of equipment in that we just need to deal with the RTCs, just smaller handheld tools and things. 
the larger hydraulic rescue equipment that we have on this vehicle, which is just up and above what we have on a normal fire engine. So we've got large cutters, two sets of those, a large spreader, which either lifts or crushes or spreads apart. Uh, and then we've got two telescopic rams, which push out. They're telescopic and they come out of the, the body housing like that itself. Okay. On this tray, we have a further two rams. Again, they're telescopic and they push out and extend and we can move objects like that as well. This big roll, which looks a little bit like uh, cling film, is actually sticky. And what we use that for is we put it onto glass before we break it. And then that just retains the glass within that film on the car itself, which makes the scene safe for us again. Underneath here, we have a variety of blocks and wedges. So in one of the other videos, you may have seen us on the, um, on the road traffic collision demonstration, we use these blocks in a variety of different ways just to support the cars that we're, um, we're then looking to extricate casualties from. As we did say, so the hydraulic rescue equipment is all run from this hydraulic power pack, which is just a petrol driven pump, really. Um, hoses go on there and then it feeds the pressure through to the actual um, tools themselves. So that's that front locker. Coming on to this one, so the middle lockers are generally the same. They're the standard on nearly all of our fire engines in, in Norfolk. On this one, we have a 60 metre hose reel, which we use for most fires. And then we carry larger hose, which delivers the water from our water supplies to our actual pumps for, for when, we're, um, when we're fighting larger fires. Uh, we have a water boiler, which is obviously very important for making the tea with. So that's there, it runs off the, uh, the vehicle electrics. And that's kind of all we have in that locker. Moving on to this one, so starting at the top, we have a lot of cable reels, so we can then run off our 110 volt generator, we can run the other 110 volt tools that we have, and we have a limited water rescue capability within that bag. So we just carry four life jackets and a couple of throw lines. Further down, we've got six of these lights, standard toolbox we carry, so it's just spanners and pliers, screwdrivers, things like that. On this pull-out tray here, I've already mentioned we carry the 110 volt generator for the variety of 110 volt tools that we've got around the other side. A foam extinguisher and a dry powder extinguisher. And we carry this positive pressure ventilation fan which we use um, during building fire incidents for actually removing the smoke and hot gases from the, uh, from the compartments of a building. And at the back there, which you can see, is a 110 volt, it's called a Grindex pump, but it's a low level pump that we can drop down into places and, uh, and pump like that. So moving around the back, if we talk about the top of the appliance first, so we've got three ladders on this appliance. We've got a standard triple extension ladder, which is the one on the bottom here, and then above that is a folding roof ladder. And then the other side, we've just got a nine metre ladder on this one. The slightly strange looking contraption in the middle is a large goods vehicle platform, an LGV platform. So it's just like a large trestle table which we can uh, primarily use at, at large goods vehicle incidents, so to do with RTCs involving larger vehicles. The pump bay is always at the back of the appliance, so all fire engines have a large tank of water in the middle, and then they have the pump at the back, which gives us our water delivery and our way of putting water into the fire. This particular appliance has a compressed air foam system on it as well. In a small pull-down tray we carry four lengths of suction hose, which means we can then lift water from open water sources, so such as ponds, rivers, lakes, the sea, swimming pools, other such things. Got a BA uh, control pack here, which is just used in conjunction with our BA entry control board, and it's ju it just provides a log for all the information that gets placed onto our BA entry control board if we're using breathing apparatus at an incident. Um, up here we have two backpack sprays, they're worn as a backpack. We fill them up with water, and then when worn on the back, we can use it. Smaller incidents, especially grass fires, field fires, and wildfires, which are quite common. And their dual use is, the other one we use with our chimney uh, equipment for fighting chimney fires, and it's how we actually pass water up a chimney on the end of a hose and some rods. Each appliance, we need to be able to get water from fire hydrants, so we have a standpipe moving around this side. So going top to bottom again, at the top we've got 
two general purpose lines, so they are just ropes. One's 30 metres long, one's 15 metres long. Behind there, we also have a casualty stretcher, which we can use just for moving casualties around, whether they're at height or in a confined space, and then they can either be carried or they can be suspended from a rope system and taken down the place or up from a confined space from there. We carry various bits of equipment in the boxes. This one's primarily to do with PPE for other members of the public and things. The two red bags are our safe working at height equipment. We carry granules, which are for use generally at RTCs, which is road traffic collisions again, which just soaks up oils and things like that. So just a, a limited amount, just to soak up those things and again, make the scene safe for, for us while we're working and the other emergency services that are there also. Pull out tray, we have a variety of hand tools. On this one, we carry two ground anchors. So if we need to anchor off something, if we're using the turfer winch or the vehicle mounted winch, we have these plates which we can hammer into the ground with the pins that are in this bag. Yes, yeah, so we'd hammer those into the ground and then we'd use the plates to anchor off should we need to pull something. Some people may ask why we've got a metal detector, which is what that is, but that's exactly for, we just check the ground before we drive those pins in, which is why we carry the metal detector. Right at the very bottom, we have a Madison door ram, because we sometimes find doors are locked when we go to them. So we have the Madison ram to break those down. We have a sack truck for any of the heavy stuff if we need to move it a long way. And we have various bow shackles. Moving on, this middle locker, again, same as the other side, we have a 60 meter hose reel and we've got the rest of our delivery hose. This locker holds a little bit more of our specialist equipment, the, the 110 volt tools and things like that. So on this tray, we have our environment agency pack, which contains equipment to soak up spills and things at hazardous materials uh, incidents. This truck here contains our two gas tight suits, which again are used in conjunction with our breathing apparatus sets at a hazardous material incident. This pull out tray, we have a large hammer drill with a braking capability as well, which we can use for drilling concrete and things like that. This E set, as it's known, is the emergency air supply equipment set. And that's for use at breathing apparatus incidents, should one of us become incapacitated while they're inside a building. Um, further tools on this one. So we have many of these. We have a little sheet metal nibbler. So for use at certainly RTCs, road traffic collisions, where there's panel vans and things like that, we can use that to actually trim out large pieces of, of metal with that, with just that little nibbler tool. Two 110 volt reciprocating saws. Most fire engines in, in, in Norfolk carry airbags and they're this sort of size with a lifting capability of about 20 tonnes each. We have some larger ones um, and then we go right the way down to these really small ones. Further down again, we have more tools. We have some low pressure lifting cushions which just come up really big and they lift uh, a very large amount of weight. As I said, we had 110 volt reciprocating saws. We have a 18 volt cordless reciprocating saw in that one. These boxes at the back are just the uh, control modules for inflating the, uh, the airbags and the various lifting cushions that we have. In this case, we have a hose inflation kit for use at um, water rescue incidents. So we have the capability of inflating a length of hose which we, we, with air, that is, from a breathing apparatus cylinder, and we're then able to float that across a water course. In this black case, we carry two gas monitors, which give us different readings because they measure different gases um, for use in especially confined space. Down on to the next one, again, just many hand tools. Um, we have fire beaters, especially for wildfire, field fires, grass fires, things like that. Brooms for clearing up at incidents. Squeegees, if we need to move any water around inside buildings at incidents. Further down, more hand tools again. And we have another box of power tools in it. So we have a large impact wrench, 
just a standard drill and an impact driver. We see these on most fire engines, they're called stab fast and they're used for vehicles when they're either upside down in a crash or on their side and we use them to support the vehicles in that position. The cab you've already seen, so we've just got the breathing apparatus sets in there, driver seat is obviously still the same. And then moving round to the front, we have a vehicle mounted winch on the front of this vehicle. Um, we'll pull 2.3 tonnes. And that's the end of my tour of Kingsland South Papa 7.